Hello everyone, wherever you are in the world when you're watching, a huge shout out to you. This is, I've got to say who I am, this is Mary Ann from Revealing Light, Tarot Astrology and Spirituality. Okay, I'm here to do tarot scopes for the month of May. I actually have had run out of time and uh, and then people started asking for the tarot scopes and so... Okay, here I am, here I am, um, a little bit late to the party, um, we'll do it all in the one video if I can, if I've got that sort of energy, otherwise we'll break it up into two, um, into two videos, part one and part two, uh, timestamps will be in the drop down menu underneath this video. Let's quickly have a look at the, well, first of all, uh, I want to say <laughs> my usual disclaimer, these are general readings, obviously, I'm talking to a lot of people, uh, and it won't resonate with everybody, so if it does resonate, if your sign resonates uh, with you, by all means claim it, otherwise move on, come back to it later on in the month, as viewers have done, and it makes more sense then, sun sign, rising, or if your moon are uh, in any of these signs. In fact, given it's all in the one or two videos, it should make it easier for you to use the sign stamps, sign stamps, time stamps, uh, well, sign stamps, yes, <laughs> to navigate between uh, sun, uh, ascended or rising sign and moon sign. All right, let's get on with it with a little bit of an overview of the astrology for the month of May. We've got a new moon in Taurus coming up on the 8th of May. Uh, that is a time where we are making it pretty vocal. We want um, we want peace, we want stability and security uh, around the world. And we see, um, we see this coinciding with mass protests, not just in the US, n not just in the US, but students protesting uh, all across the world. And where it's not students, then we still have the continual march um, protesting uh, the war in um, the war in the Middle East, uh, the escalation of tensions and of course what is happening in Gaza and also continued holding of uh, Israeli hostages. Very complex situation there. Um, but few of, few of us could uh, could be so hard, hardcore in our beliefs that we could we, that we could not see what is happening to the Palestinians in Gaza so they expect more people to come out this is this the longer this goes on the more the escalate escalation there is in uh in these sort of protests and calls for uh sanity so um New moon in Taurus. Uh, it's a time when we can break through. Taurus is a, a, a very uh, determined sign. New moons are all about initiating and starting something. Expect you to have the for, expect to have the fortitude to clear the decks. Say to people, "No, I'm going to be doing this," and you to get on with what you want to do because you're determined to do that. We've got a full moon uh, in Sagittarius on the 23rd of May. If new moons are about beginnings, then full moons about, are about completion. In Sagittarius, we see a future-oriented sign. Sagittarius is always looking to the horizon. And so we could see some kind of breakthrough deal or ceasefire, truce, temporary truce, something like that uh, coming in, in, uh, in the Middle East um, between, in the month of May, let's just put it like that. Um, for us personally, individually, uh, this is about this is a time where we, if we've started those new projects and goals, it's about uh, acknowledging those, uh, acknowledging that we've had the fortitude to get on with it, and putting to bed um, some of the outstanding issues that we may have been working on and uh, and moving on because of course after the after the full moon we go into a, a new lunar uh, lunar phase in the next month. Um, some of the highlights of May, astrologically, we have Mars entering Aries on the 1st of May, depending on when um, I release this, you will have already been feeling that energy. It can be aggressive. 
Uh, it is a time to uh, be assertive, yes, be driven, yes, but remember that aggression gets you nowhere. Um, you still have to temper your emotions and feelings, particularly for Cancerians, um, with a little bit of um, logic. Uh, and remember that um, that life is about relationships and we want those relationships to be harmonious. So Mars uh, into Aries, that will give you a bit of speed in your sales to start and accomplish those goals. On the 3rd of May, we have Pluto stationing retrograde. This is the one I wasn't looking forward to because I think we all you know, gave that sigh of relief when Pluto moved into Aquarius. We could feel the collective um, perhaps... If we, if we don't want to use the word getting stronger in their wishes and their will uh, and their motivation uh, to try and make things better, um, we, uh, we certainly have been able to see the truth and that's what Pluto and Aquarius has done. It has exposed uh, a lot of corruption and uh, a lot of truth is coming out. Um but retrograde, meaning it's making its slow, very slow uh, movement back into Capricorn for a few months this year before it moves permanently next year into uh, into uh, Aquarius. We could be going over old ground. And that's uh, that's what I wasn't looking forward to because as a Sagittarian myself, I I like forward movement. I don't like uh, backward movement. But what does Pl when Pluto when all the planets are retrograde, it gives us a chance to go back and revisit certain issues and do it better a second time. So there is that optimistic view of a um, a retrograde Pluto. Uh, we've got on the 16th of May, Mercury entering Taurus. So again, um, Mercury is the planet of communication. Taurus is this fixed sign. It is all about val what we value, inner and outer values. Um, and of course, Taurus is ruled by Venus. So Mercury uh, entering Taurus, be prepared to, uh, to hear that other people want what they want um, and desire what they want desire uh, but also for them not to be uh, they're not going to give up on this again Taurus very determined so um, there can be some intractability in the communication uh, when Mercury enters Taurus um, Mercury can also be pretty fiery don't you worry about that as well uh, very close to the sun isn't it um, but yeah, uh, I think uh, as with everything, give and take is the uh, is the motto, and respecting other people's points of view. Uh, on the twentieth, we get the sun entering Gemini, because Gemini is um, associated with the third house and ruled by Mercury as well. It's lightning quick uh, communication, lightning quick thoughts, um, expression, um, and we get the sun entering Gemini. So. Uh, this is all to do with the uh, intellect as well. So there could be some breakthroughs, uh, academic, scientific type of breakthroughs per for you personally, for us personally. Uh, we will all find that this expression, our outer expression becomes, um, I guess, what's the word? It's not optimistic. Uh, the sun is, is the giver of life. Uh, the sun is I am. Uh, and so uh, we ca it is an opportunity for us to be authentic in a really good way. The sun brings strength, of course. Uh, on the 24th of May, Venus enters Gemini. And, and this is anything to do with Venus is, is, you know, the planet of love, relationships. And so you could sit, find yourself sitting down for a good heart to heart with a loved one, uh, commute, putting the highlight on loving communication, perhaps a good time to um, soothe or smooth over any of the wounds uh, that may have arisen um, when Mars entered Aries. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, so it's a good time for also um, uh, diplomat diplomatic negotiations and across the world um, and uh, hopefully can we cross our fingers for some kind of truce in the Middle East. I'd love to see a ceasefire. Uh, on the 26th of um, 
May we have Jupiter entering, entering Gemini and this Ju Jupiter bestows benefits, great benefic. And entering Gemini, you could find that your words might have a lucky flavour to them um, and you could be uh, a little bit, you could be able to influence um, and sway uh, another person's point of view um, Jupiter rules the ninth house uh, uh, and Sagittarius is, is associated with the ninth house as well. We have that full moon in Sagittarius on the 23rd of May and on the 26th Jupiter en enters uh, Gemini. So yeah, again, this, this is a good time to for political leaders to perhaps get their point of view across um, to uh, be able to... Um, I'm not going to say explain, uh, but articulate uh, articulate policy, articulate decisions, uh, and perhaps also introduce new initiatives and policies. Um, okay, because people are listening when Gemini's uh, when Gemini's there. Gemini is also very quick as well, um, and uh, and so with Jupiter in Gemini, you could find that you're able to handle. You, multitask uh, and accomplish many many things um, within you know within a short period of time so let's move to the a actual um, tar uh, tarot scope now we will start with Aries um, okay so what am I doing here all right um, Oh no, I'll go back and do the timestamps uh, afterwards, um, which is in itself <laughs> a chore, <laughs> but I'll do it because it's going to be a long video. Um, the decks I pulled out today are interesting. I bought this a long time ago, Handle, the Handle Tarot, and I wasn't really drawn to it when I first picked it up, but I was just looking in my bookshelf and I saw it, it jumped out, I picked it up. So it'll be interesting to see how it, that goes. I'm using the Astro Matrix Tarot and also the Tree of Life Oracle deck. Okay, let's get started with Aries and see how long we can go without having to split this up, have a have a break and then do some more. Or we might get it done in the one session. All right, starting off with the Handle Tarot for Aries. Let's see what's going on for Aries in the month of May. Aries in the month of May. A I'm seeing a large armchair. Um, what is this? Okay, and a child sitting in a very oversized chair. And he's the child's been out uh, collecting wood. So, um, I don't know, you know, grandchildren are highlighted, spending time with grandchildren. Um, also learning, learning from grandchildren, learning from grandparents. There's that whole generational flow to families. Um, and, and that's important to have that. It's important for continuity. So some of you could be thinking about family legacies. All right, Aries, what's coming up for Aries? Aeroplane, aeroplane travel, I heard for some. I heard that clear audience certainly travel. Possibly even to a place like uh, Japan, Tokyo. Um, it has a, an Asian feel to it. All right, Aries, what's happening with Aries, please, in the month of May? So we have here the Hanged Man, uh, Neptunian influence here, the Hanged Man. And, you know, we talk about the Hanged Man being uh, a time of suspension and pausing and delay. But in actual fact, it actually is forward progress because the Hanged Man is able to look at things another way and uh, and to see another another point of view. Uh, it is around uh, the hangman's head that we see the halo. And what is that halo but the light of awareness? So Neptunian energy talks specifically about the period of time that we take before we create uh, something, something coming into form, the hanged man. And then we have uh, the Ten of Swords. 
So you could be feeling, you could be, Aries could be actually going back and thinking about uh, something that came to a pretty terrible end. And you're able to see a little bit more of um, uh, another po person's point of view, or you're able to see what might have happened and why. This is clarity on an old sit old situation that was rather painful for you that brought something fairly dramatic to an end. We have the um, Son of Swords, the Prince of Swords here in the south. <clears throat> the Prince of Swords is about the truth. This is a lot. What are you seeing with that? In that hanged man position, you're seeing uh, a lot of truth, Aries. In the past, we have the King of Wands in the east. Um, in the east, so we have the uh, King of Wands in the past. That's your energy, Aries. Um, there's uh, he making a new fire. That's what Aries do does. Uh, a new cycle but that's in the past so there's something around what you're thinking about now um, it could even be uh, moving closer to family for example and then we get the eight of swords um, which is crowning this reading and the eight of swords speaks to fear fear and can be paranoia um, something that is enclosing and containing us uh, and stopping us from doing what we need to do. And then we have the Magician card here. Alchemy is in the future. So you're in a period of time where you're kind of thinking about making a major decision, perhaps reconnecting with others, um, putting the past behind you. Uh, moving closer to family, but you're not quite there yet. You'll get there in the, in the immediate future, but not quite there that yet. What? Not quite there yet. So I would say for Aries, it's a month of introspection before you take some sort of action. You are actively trying to put the past to bed. One card for Aries in May, please, from the Tree of Life, and we get the thirtieth path, the Sun. <clears throat> purpose vision and self-mastery that's why you get the alchemy card in the past you haven't been able to transmute the pain in may you start to see that you have nothing to fear because uh you have a vision now that you didn't have before and that is the purpose of the hanged man all right let's move on to let us move on to uh, what comes next. Hang on, <laughs> let me get organised here. I've just run out of room quite spectacularly. I need to do some housekeeping on this table. Um, I will put in timestamps. I don't know why I haven't been doing that. Aries, we go to Leo at 1740. Okay, so we've got intro. I'll go back and put Aries in. Uh, and now we go to Leo at 1740. All right, let's have a look at what's going on for Leo. Leo, Leo, Leo. Leo, my friend, my Leo friends. Of course, uh, you are the fixed fire sign, Aries being the cardinal and Sagittarius being the mutable. But no, we're talking about Leo now. I think uh, for Leo, um, you've got new things coming up on the horizon. I'm seeing the sun. Whatever this new thing that's coming up will make you incredibly happy, will give you happiness. Um, it's like the warmth on your skin. It's that kind of feeling. Uh, all is right with the world. So there's a level of satisfaction coming up for you. Show me what's coming up for Leo in May. So we have here uh, failure. <laughs> We have the Eight of Cups. Don't worry. I know where this reading is going um, because the, crossing you, you have the two, of, uh, the two of Wands, something coming to fruition in time. And in this deck, it's Dominion. So guess what? You have Dominion over your failure. In other words, something that hasn't worked in the past has the potential to work in the future. Let's see where this is taking us. So we get the Six of Swords. Absolutely, um, 
moving away from troubled waters. So I really do love this. This is you, uh, you feel, starting to feel the rays of sun on your on your skin. And we have the seven of swords in the past. And in this tarot card, I hate to use keywords, but they're saying uselessness, the seven of swords. I mean, the seven of swords is about, um, can be self-deception as well. Deception, deceive, deceiving or being deceived. Uh, but also self-deception. De and, and we don't pull people up uh, on deception if we're not confident in our own truth, do we? Uh, or in, in our own power, not some, well, yeah, truth, authenticity, power. Uh, but this is in the past for you. So maybe this is why you've got this dominion card happening. And again, like Aries, we have the hanged man being able to see something in a different way. I love it when these cards keep repeating in the tarot scopes because it tells me a lot about what's going on in the collective. We have the Ten of Swords in the immediate future. I am going to pull another one and then we have success. Okay, so very, very, uh, and work, Three of Stones, work. I, 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 despite the, um, the energies, I'm pretty happy for you because it looks like you're turning... Some, some, for some around work, whatever work that is, community work, family work, 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 paid work, you're turning something uh, that has not been working for you, you're turning it around with the base of the pack saying you're going to be quite successful and then we pull the six of stones, which is the six of pentacles and the, the key word underneath that is success. You're going to get the help you need to heal from the repeated pattern of what hasn't worked in the past. So good job, uh, good job, Leo. Uh, whatever this sun ish, uh, sun um, energy is, it, you're coming up trumps. You're coming up. You're turning up diamonds. Um, whatever this endeavor is, let's just call it endeavor. It's actually going to be successful. But you actually get the help that you need to make it successful. And for some, this is a new business or work. Okay, so Leo, uh, what's happening for the month of May? And we have here the Hierophant, loyalty, kindness and, and patience. Guess why you have a good chance of success here because you're getting the help you need. There's something very, um, the Hierophant has the keys to something, the keys to, um, to unlocking a spiritual or a divine, um, it's a little bit like that Jupiterian energy. The Hierophant can bestow gifts upon us uh, when we've really been through this hanged man process uh, and we're able to see great clarity as to why we have not been successful. The Hierophant then gives us Spirit, great spirit, God gives us the hand up that we need. I truly do believe that once we've cleared the muck out and we understand exactly that moment of clarity brings a great deal of potential for manifestation. And I think that's where you are at this time, Leo. Okay, let's move on to Sagittarius. The Handle Tarot is quite an interesting deck in many ways. Sag, okay, you're the mutable sign and you're at 23.18. Sagittarius. Okay, so what spark are you dealing with? Where are you sending your spark? Where is your vision taking you uh, in the future? Let's see what's coming up for Sagittarius in May. I'm straight away seeing... Uh, the two of swords this time. Uh, it's like dueling at uh, 10 paces type thing. There's decisions to be made. You can either celebrate or be happy or you can take on people in that fanatical dog-headed way that you sometimes do. Um, so Sagittarius, when it's positively posited, positioned, can be the sage, the wisdom giver, the... Uh, philosophy, high ideals, and then that sometimes can turn into fanaticism and preaching. Um, all signs, all, all 
human beings have two, you know, not more, more many sides to them. Um, okay, so Sag, there's something around you, a decision you're making, but there's also a celebration I, I see here for you. Um, so what could have been a fairly difficult situation or relationship suddenly turns to one where you are celebrating. So the, it's good times coming up for you, Sagittarius in May. Show me Sagittarius. Okay, so we have here the Queen of Cups. The Queen of Cups. This is nurturing yourself. This is um, Venus energy. And uh, this is um, not just nurturing yourself, but being able to nurture others. And then we have strength. And because you're doing that, your strength is returning. Okay, that's really nice. I'm, I'm pleased with that. that. This, is, um, uh, this is, of course, strength card is Leo energy. Let's see, <laughs> the Hierophant. Okay, so we have the Hierophant um, card coming out in this tarot. And this is Taurian energy, of course. Um, you've mastered a great deal of change, Sagittarius. And again, you've reached like Leo, but in a different way, perhaps about your own health and well-being or about your own ability to give to others or receive from others. There's a great deal of clarity. This could be around your relationships as well. A great deal of clarity moving in uh, into your life at this time. And of course, uh, a greater connection with spirit as well. In the past, we had oppression, the Ten of Wands, carrying too heavy a load, uh, resenting that you have to carry too heavy a load. This is all about you've managed to transit a situation where too much had too much on your shoulders to a situation where you've opened up to the universe, to the future, to the to the stargazing that you like to do, Sagittarius, you freed yourself up in some way. Stargazing, the star, hope. Um, and you have that hope again. And this is Aquarius energy. And that's where you like to be. You're very comfortable in this energy. Aquarius, of course, is known as the water uh, the water bearer, not that it's a water sign, but it takes knowledge through from uh, the earth, through uh, through water, through the emotions, through the air, uh, and you get this great um, deal of clarity and enlightenment. Um, and you're probably for the first time in a long time feeling hopeful. <laughs> Happiness, the Six of Cups, reconciled with the past. That is a huge statement, Sagittarius, reconciled with the past. Um, the Six of Cups. Underneath the pack, we have the King of Swords, so facing of the truth and the Ace of Pentacles. This is very much a, uh, a new start, manifesting a new start. And I, think, I don't even think you're worried about manifestation. It's just that you now are feeling more hopeful. And as a result happier, happier Sagittarius. And this could be after a period of time where you haven't been happy. Um, so really it's the simplicity of that statement. What do you find in March? You find happiness. Okay. Reconciliation of the past brings you happiness in the present and vision for the future. Hmm. The star card. All right, let's have a look at Sagittarius. Sagittarius in May. And we have here the element of fire. Wow, in your element, you are a mutable fire sign. Passion, enthusiasm and creation. And that's really what's going to bring you happiness in May. So focus on that, Sagittarius. Okay, I really need some more space here. Um, let's move the teacup, pack up the handle, which I mac handle tarot, which I'm actually enjoying using. Have a sip of tea.
and move to we'll do air signs next so we will start with hmm let's start with aquarius at 29.39 lots of nines there aquarius what's happening for aquarius in the month of may show me aquarius let's move this cup aquarius in the month of may what's happening for aquarius wow <laughs> <laughs> okay so there's kind of a guru emerging uh from my third eye and the guru is playing some kind of sitar or something like that i'm getting a very middle eastern feeling around these tarot scopes today not middle eastern eastern i should say goodness gracious not middle eastern um eastern kind of a buddhism type vibe going on here in this with me or in this house or uh, perhaps a way of looking at things that possibly could be uh, more zen like um, could take us away from our current worries and strife uh, and bring us into that moment of happiness and i feel aquarius understand this more than most pluto is in your sign albeit retrograde and will be there for the next few decades in in the sign of aquarius uh and so it's kind of like you, you you've got advanced knowledge on things um and you know that the way forward is to pursue happiness um even if others are not doing so this is your visionary nature your uranus energy here okay aquarius show me what is happening for aquarius in may good for you aquarius hmm okay so we have mixed happiness the four of cups four of cups can speak of disappointment it's not all disappointment though it's like there's a ace up your sleeve even though you may have lost emotionally because cups are all about water and emotions mixed happiness could be you looking at your situation now and going i'm not fully i'm not fully happy and we get the two of swords and uh, having to make a decision and and we've got peace the key word of peace here and pardon me and so there's a decision you're acknowledging that you're not totally happy with whatever your circumstances are and there's a decision that you are making or have made which brings you peace of mind we have here the ten of swords is at the foundation of the ruin of the ruin of the reading and we get ruin so don't be afraid of the ten of swords it, it can mark the end of a cycle and i notice that the sword has been driven into rocks here and so uh any at any time you could pull one of those swords out like the arthurian legend uh and you could start the beautiful new new cycle i think Aquarius you've made it or are or will make a huge making a huge decision about your future lifestyle or your future situation the um, knight of swords the prince of swords the prince of swords in the past and so this is facing the truth again you, you you're ahead of us Aquarius uh, in that you already see the writing on the wall you have already seen that and we get the star card here's your energy here's your energy here's your energy the star card Aquarian uh, energy uh, and having hope for the future but first you must change the present and then we get the devil in Capricorn if you haven't made that decision the devil in capricorn can speak to attachment uh and worry also uh one of the biggest reasons we get attached to something is is uh is our attachment to money capricornian energy uh, you know again you know i talked about pluto retrograding back into capricornian for a few months of this year so it could be that you already know what you have to do you could have been putting off this decision won't change things you'll eventually decide to pursue happiness and look you've got the hierophant here and so this is a, a fairly spiritual decision spiritual time for you uh, some of you actually could be moving to the east given I, i've got that eastern type of countries 
the base of the pack we have the six of swords some of you could be traveling but i still i still get lingering what's the word lingering uh indecision or doubt uh and that's that de that's that devil the devil and the hierophant spirit and earthly attachment and habits i know which way you're going to go you'll go toward the star and so this decision uh, that you may be putting off or procrastinating about, have a look at really what you're attached to and why. It's interesting, I did a bit of that this morning. So why do I need this? Do I really need it? Is it making me happy? What else do I need? So there could be a compromise position for you to get what you want. Show me Aquarius in May. So we have here the element of air. This is you, thoughts, minds, communication. And again, this star card, you won't be put off your essential nature. And I see the compass here. Some of you could literally be traveling. Base of the pack is Malkuth, kingdom, earth manifestation, being in the here and now. That's really what's going to be overriding in this decision that you uh, eventually make. This is a major lifestyle change for your Chris, I feel. Again, this will apply to some. For others, uh, it won't. Okay, so let's move to... Let's move to Libra. No, let's do, let's do Gemini. We've got the sun moving into Gemini in, uh, in May. And this is going to be 3608. Gemini 3608. It's going to be a big, uh, this is your birthday month. This is your season, Gemini. Uh, and so, you know, this is illumination of your thoughts, of your thinking, thinking of your expression, of your brilliance, Gemini. Let's just put it like that, of your brilliance. Moving into Gemini season, what's coming up for Gemini in the month of May? Gemini, Gemini, the Ace of Cups. The seeds, three of cups, the seeds of potential for um, reunions through um, circle, you know, getting in touch with, with friendship, though your support system, but also the potential for a new emotional start. You're so much up in your head. It's all about your emotions in May. And, of course, your thinking will, will inform your perceptions because sometimes perceptions can be obviously heart orientated so a great deal of clarity coming forward in your emotions okay in the absence of confusion uh, we find happiness don't we all right happiness and clarity all right so uh, what's coming up for gemini gemini in may all right, so we get defeat the five of swords. This is sabotage. You could be internally sabotaging yourself. Uh, you could feel like you're being sabotaged by others. But this is also fives are all about change. And so let's see what's happening here. The five, five, five of stones, material difficulties. Okay, so <sighs> which Geminis have been struggling financially? Because that's what I'm seeing. Which Geminis feel that money might be slipping through your fingers. This this is going to change in May. We get the devil. Yeah, this is a lot about finances. The devil card, Capricornian energy. Again, number 15, so many fives here. What What is this issue around money that's coming through very strongly for some Geminis? What is this issue around money? So I'm getting, um, I'm, I'm getting like a Jack in the Beanstalk energy here. Um, so there could be a breakthrough coming through here. If you've been struggling, let's keep, keep going the eight of cups uh is loss walking away from loss some of you could have had a financial loss and then we get the king of swords needing to plan and and make those plans and strategies for 
managing finances in the future. And then we get swiftness, the eight of wands. The sooner you start to make those plans, the better. And then we get the chariot. It's just something is speeding up. I have to keep going here. Cancerian energy, a swiftness, the eight of swords, quickness. Um, what is this quickness? And we get the five of cups again. What? What's going on? I'm just going to have to... Mother of Pentacles, Queen of Pentacles. There's something around finances coming up for Gemini's here. What is this? Chariots, swiftness, disappointment. Show me. Okay, that wants to slip out. And the hanged man looking at something a little bit differently. Okay, some of you, some Gemini's I'm talking to have a real fear around money um, and loss of money. But you're being encouraged to look at something a little bit differently. What's the answer you want to give me, Spirit? There's definitely a design in uh, this reading. What's the answer? And we get here material gain, the wish fulfillment, <laughs> the nine of uh, pentacles. <laughs> this is um, having everything you need. Having everything you need. And there's a, a real collective message here. A real collective message, counting your blessings, living in the moment and understanding we have everything we need. And the nine of wands power, that brings forward the power. Oh, some of you who have been doing it tough financially might find you get, uh, and it's definitely around money for you, Gemini, that you have a win of some sort or an extra inflow of money. All right, let's pull the um, Tree of Life card for you. Uh, fairly surprising reading to get so many uh, negative cards followed by the Chariot, the Eight of uh, the Eight of Wands, and then the Material Gain card. Um, security and insecurity around money. All right, Gemini, what is the Tree of Life card? What is the card you want to bring forward for Gemini's in May? And we have Path, the Fool. <laughs> we know what the Fool is. It's the potential of a new start, taking a leap of faith, freedom and trusting your own intuition. Perhaps some Geminis are going to quit their job all of a sudden because they're so unhappy and take that leap of faith. Uranus energy, something unpredictable happening. Fascinating reading, Gemini, for you for the month of May. Remember the sun moves into your sign this month as well. Okay, let's look at Libra energy, please. 42.22. Let's have a sip of our tea. Okay. So Libra, Oop, something wanted to come out, the Ace of Cups, brand new reset, I love that, reset, oh the sun card, let's, let's get into it Libra, okay the emotions, um, and the potential for a new, a new cycle uh, around emotions, again these are repeating themes for all tarot scopes, okay maybe I'll listen to this back in its entirety. Okay, uh, Libra, what's coming up for Libra? Okay, so we get, I see the horse. I see someone getting on a horse. Um, no, you haven't gotten on the horse. There's something, uh, some, some kind of journey coming up for you or could be coming up for you. This could be a reluctance to, um, well, journeys are all about change, aren't they? They can be actual journeys. Um, this could literally be a Libra who's a horse rider. Um, okay, let's have a look. Libra, Libra, getting back to the future uh, is is a theme here. So maybe you've been a childhood rider. There's something about getting back in touch with your authentic self. Uh, there's a huge, huge message, all signs message here around happiness and the pursuit of happiness and attaining happiness doing more with less and focusing on your happiness rather than a continual push for whatever uh, whatever whatever you're chasing 
that could be the message of the horse to stop chasing something that is not making you happy. All right, yep, the star card. Yep, that's the message. That's the message Spirit wanted me to give. All right, Libra. Show me Libra, please. Libra, Libra for the month of May. So we get here the Prince of Pentacles, Chief Seattle. The Prince of Pentacles. Very interesting deck handle uh, by Herman Handel. By Herman Handel, the Handel Tarot. The Handel Tarot. No, I don't know where you can get it. Just do your internet search and find it. But it is... Uh, it's it's an it's yeah it's a surprising deck, the Prince of Pentacles consistency the slowest horse, in the the slowest horse and rider, in fact in some decks the rider's not even on the horse that's interesting, what was that that I just saw there possibly a bird, flying past my window. So slowing down, is a big message for you, and we have justice. This is your card. <laughs> This is Libra. Prince of Pentacles and Libra. Balance. What is out of balance? Yes, the cockatoos are all around me. And I can see their reflection flying through the uh, past my windows. Okay, so um, movement, swiftness. But this is this is about slowing down. This is a huge message about slowing down. We get the Emperor card. This is Aries energy taking control. And we get the, um, what's this, the, um, the, oh gosh, my mind's just gone blank, judgment, judgment card, that's in the past, the inevitability of something, the end of a cycle, the beginning of something, of something new, Let's. that's in the past, so you've taken on something new, I'm just getting a lot of, I know you can't hear the birds, but I can. Um, a lot of white cockatoos swirling around my house. There are They are special to me, the cockatoos. But it's happened in this reading. There's a huge message about you've taken on something new in the past and it could be getting a bit out of control. It is time to take control back. And slow everything down. We get the Ace of Pentacles in the sky. So again, this is a, a new get the potential of a new start. The Ace carries the seed of something new. Pentacles can be uh, uh, you know income, wealth, but can also be freedom. I feel economic free, monetary freedom for you. I feel that's what you're chasing, Libra, in a way. And I feel you will have success at it because we get the Ten of Cups. Love. What is important to you, love. You have to find, and you do this the best of all the signs, find balance. Balance. You will get to where you're going. You don't need to get there really quickly. You just need to get there consistently. And uh, we get the world, the world card. The world card. So there was a inevitable beginning of a new cycle. The world, the universe, Saturn, speaks to the end and completion of a major, a major project and a new start. But before you can complete that, this is I'm not going to say warning, but it's t speaking very strongly about slowing down, getting off the horse, being the Prince of Pentacles, consistent effort. Not taking on any more than what you can handle. And balancing, balancing things out. You will reach, you will reach the, what you, you will, will reach your goal. The potential is the Ace of Pentacles. All right, let's pull a, um, let's pull a Tree of Life for Libra. Let's give it a shuffle. Tree of Life. The tree of life. Okay, so what's coming up for Libra in May, please? Libra in May. I'm seeing that Ten of Cups very strongly. It's like the rainbow there. Family, love, completion. You earn your tenth cup. Okay, 
Bina, understanding silence, or Bina, understanding silence, awareness, the divine feminine. This is where you need to go to find your balance. This is Libra, really. Silence, awareness, the divine feminine. And again, Saturn energy. Saturn energy is calling to go within, to find that containment and control. I notice that she is holding, oh crikey, there's the white bird and there's the ace of cups. Thank you, spirit. That's a pretty strong message for you. Slow it down. Don't take on any more. Complete your goal. You'll get to where you want to go. All right, Libra, let's move to, hmm, all right, where are we going now? We'll go to water signs. So let's go to Cancer at 50-12. I, I do get a great deal of satisfaction out of the tarot scopes. There are a lot of political uh, <laughs> readings I could have done today, but uh, I know that you wanted that you wanted these tarot scopes done with the cards. And so here we go, Cancer. What's coming up for Cancerians in the month of May? Cancerians in the month of May. Something, you're chained to something. You feel like it's like a wrecking ball in a way. Um, chained to the wrecking ball. Um, definitely need freedom here. You're searching for freedom. You're searching really... And it looks like you will attain that because I, I see like a judgment and inevitability about freeing yourself from whatever has been dragging you down, whatever might ha have been swinging into your life and having the potential to wreck something. I see you breaking out of that. The sunshine, the sunshine, the dark clouds are moving away. So, Cancerians, you had... Um, you know, might have you might have found Mars in Aries um, energy quite difficult. You might have had a short fuse. You might have been impatient of late. So, all right, let's see what this is all about for Cancerians in May. The sun is coming up. Uh, so we have here the sun. <laughs> oh dear, happiness, life affirming. I am. What a beautiful card. Sun is coming up on your emotionally for you. I love that card for you. The sun. And we have the daughter of swords, the princess of swords, Isis energy. The goddess Isis. I think she was was she a Greek goddess? The um princess of swords. So there is uh you could find an um something coming out of the blue has the potential to come out of the blue and drive away the dark clouds there. Let's see what else is going on. The four of stones, the power of the earth, the four of pentacles, Conser conserving. It's like the moat around the, around the castle, um, conserving something, holding back on something, um, maybe an insecurity. This tether here is your insecurity cancer and you're getting free of that in the past we had richness the ten of pentacles that's the past the family the legacies inheritance and then we get the king of pentacles in the sky old man the king of pentacles in the sky old man hmm Feet, hands, the king of pentacles. Business, business upturns, business breakthroughs. We get the five of cups. Some of you could be doing a lot of thinking about your father. Five of cups, disappointment. And clarifying that, the wheel of fortune. Expect a breakthrough. And this could be associated to, you know, talk. If your father's not with you, talk to him. There's a reaching out here. 
Nothing is by accident. A, si a huge situation turns around for you. Ten of Cups, success. All right, Cancer, let's pull a card for you from the Tree of Life. Show me, Cancer. And we have here Malkuth Kingdom, Earth Manifestation being here in the now. Being here in the now. This, you know, kingdom, your domain, earth manifestation, being here in the now. One more. Path, art, temperance, self-sufficiency, boldness and devotion. There's a breakthrough coming in May for you, one way or another. Well, you've already experienced that, but I do urge you, there is a, a father or a grandfatherly energy here that you need to connect with cancer. All right, we shall look at hmm, Scorpio. Scorpio. What's happening for Scorpio? Another sip of the tea. Hmm. Okay, Scorpio. It's been a weird morning for pulling cards. Uh, however, a very potentially creative morning. And this could be, I mean, you would understand that sentence, wouldn't you? Scorpio. <laughs> All right, Scorpio. What's happening for you, Scorpio? What's happening for you, Scorpio? What is happening for you? Scorpio wants to write the future, write the present, write the past. It's like a message across the sun. What are you writing? Richness, what are you writing? Believe, believe. Believe, believe, you're writing believe across the face of the sun. Believe, Scorpio, what do, you be what do you need to believe in? Believe in the richness of life. What is this believe? What message do you want me to deliver to Scorpios? Believe, show me what's coming up for Scorpios in May. Believe, believe in happiness. Believe in victory, <laughs> the Six of Wands, victory, the Queen of Swords, logic, okay, you're not, you're not a fool, you're not going to be fooled, what was it, once, bitten, twice, shy, no, that's not what I'm looking for, fool me once, fool me twice, you can't fool me a third time, that kind of energy, um, because Scorpios can be quite cynical, the scorpion tail, getting ready to strike, trust is a big thing, but there's victory here in the way that you're thinking, which, which indicates a, a great deal of strength in your mind, the hanged man, how many times has this come up, looking at something in a different way, to stay strong, to understand and believe in victory. The High Priestess, using your intuition, using your intuition, that's in the past. And then we get the Prince of Stones, consistency, staying with it, Scorpio, not giving up, working hard, putting in the effort, looking after yourself, the Queen of Cups. And then we get um, Alchemy, the Magician, Alchemy. No, sorry, temperance. That's the temperance card. So, um, so manifest manifesting temperance, even hand handedness, looking after yourself. Transmuting the pain of emotions into the into willpower. In the present, being able to trust, being able to believe, not falling back into that same old pattern. We get the Six of uh, Cups again. Check out the, the Sagittarian reading, I feel, Scorpio. Eight 
able to manifest healing. Anything else for Scorpio? The Queen of Pentacles. The Queen of Pentacles. Spider Woman. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting uh, card and description here. Mother of Stones in the West. Spider Woman. Being able to weave. Being able to weave through... Um, to achieve everything you want to achieve, Scorpio. Take note of those who do that because there's a lesson there. And the Princess of Stones, White Buffalo Woman. Something to do with your work. You've been anxious around the work that you do. I don't think it's actually purely finances. I don't think there's an anxiety there. I think this is around whatever it is, work that you do. But I feel that you are able to, you're very determined. You're the fixed sign. And so you're able to persist because you see the thread of the future you see the thread of the here and now and the thread of the future previously you would have given up throwing your hands in the air you're not doing that this time and spirit is urging you to believe believe in your own happiness believe in the ability for you to be happy believe in the future scorpio believe in the future all right could i have a card please for scorpio Card for Scorpio. <laughs> the personality triangle. Interesting. Personality, nature and mindfulness. Okay, so we've got Venus, we've got Mercury and we've got the Moon. Again, your emotions, love, communication. The personality triangle. Personality, nature and mindfulness. 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 How, look how nature copes with um, downturn and how it responds and springs back in times of abundance and how it persists. The seed goes into hibernation during the brut brutality, the coldness of the winter and gets ready for the spring. Okay, Scorpio, let's move to Pisces. Pisces at 102. One seven. After this, I'm going for an e-bike ride. The birds are calling me. <laughs> I do 10Ks a day on that e-bike. I don't know. I have it about 60, 40 set. Maybe I do 60% of the work. The bike does 40%. So I get a, a, a good exercise. But most of all, I get to be out in nature with the with those birds okay so pisces pisces what's coming up for pisces pisces what's coming up for pisces i'm getting the ace of wands here in the phoenix so i've got a feeling that you are phoenix rising from the ashes carrying the ace of wands it's just motivation and passion there is a new project or plan a new motivation that has really come been unearthed out of the ashes you find it's not it's not been burnt uh, or destroyed and it has the ability this this pl project this plan has the ability because i'm seeing the wolf here and uh to keep almost to keep the wolf from the door to nour nourish the wolf i'm getting the rose image to love care and nourish those that you love there's something here that you have a great deal of confidence in Pisces. What is this? What's coming up for Pisces, please, in May? Okay, so we get here love, the two of cups, love, love, commitments, contracts, love, upward energy. Now I'm looking at the I Ching. <laughs> this has got here, I mean, it's been years since I've used the I Ching. Two of Cups, the flow of love, 
courage, the seven of wands, defending those that you love, providing, nourishing for those that you love. The death card, the end of something, the end of something. The death card doesn't literally mean death. It means something you've had to let go of. And interestingly enough, that that skeletal hand has a rod here. What happens with the phoenix is it is burnt in the ashes of fire and it reinvents itself. Scorpio energy, death and transformation, rebirth, strength is in the past, Leo energy. What is crowning this reading is the seven of stones. Seven of Pentacles is a manifestation card and you do have to move through something, move through a roadblock and find another way through. But it is upward energy there, or can be. We get the Queen of Cups. Venus energy, motherhood, mothering, nourishing. There's something about nourishing others. And the hanged man again, looking at things differently. Don't, I think you're deciding not to be so hard on yourself and to appreciate what, what you've accomplished. The magician. With the seven of pentacles and the magician card here, you're manifesting something. And there's that rod there very prominently, pulling the Ace of Swords out of the Arthurian stone and the rods through the cups here. They're all about the emotions. What has been difficult will become easier for you. One more message for Pisceans. The Father of Wands, be bold. Father of Wands, there's that staff there. Wow, burning the fire, starting the fire, the flame of something new. All right, let's pull a let's pull a tree of life card for for you, Pisces. Pisces, what's coming up for Pisces, please? Whoa. Severity, might, discipline and karma, Mars energy. Yeah, it's it's like getting to a point where you understand that you are, uh, and look, she's got that rod as well. That this is there's no more time for pro procrastination. No more time for procrastination. In order to move upward, it's going to take hard work. But there could be luck involved here as well. The 25th part, art and temperance, self-sufficiency, sufficiency, boldness and devotion. Yeah, find what you love, do what you love. I think you get a breakthrough, the sun. Purpose, vision, self-mastery. You get a breakthrough, um, Pisces, in your motivation to keep moving forward, doing something that you love, something possibly that you're good at. Otherwise, we wouldn't love it so much. Okay, let's move to Earth Energy now. Let's move to Capricorn. Capricorn at 1... 0850 Capricorn, Capricorn, Capricorn. Okay, let's tune in psychically. I'm seeing like a fairly um, strong structure, like a bridge pylon, like a, a bridge that maybe over land that that's up on pylons. 
I see low cloud, but the structure is strong enough to withstand any storm. What's coming up for Capricorn? So I'm getting the two of wands, something coming to fruition in time. If you are challenged in any way during May with whatever the issue or event is, Capricorn, you are strong enough to withstand this challenge. It's simply a matter of choosing a different road. Okay. Capricorn, what's coming up for Capricorn in May? Capricorn in May. Yep. Okay. So there is a penetration here of the veil, of some kind of veil here, some kind of wall, an opening up of something. And of course we get the sword here, so truth will truth will open a new pathway forward for you in May. Okay, and you're strong enough to pursue that. Capricorn, what's coming up for Capricorn? The hanged man again, looking at something in a different way. I think I probably should try and find the thumbnail of this because, honestly, this has come up so many times. This is about slowing down, pausing, suspending something, turning something around, looking at something in a different way. The light of awareness And the Queen of Cups, nurturing yourself is the answer. The Wheel of Fortune, again, a breakthrough of some, some kind, luck. We get here the Two of Wands, something coming to fruition in time. That's the past there. I get feelings in this card of the Tower that, Perhaps you either feared a tower moment in the tarot. The tower talks about restructuring, breaking down of structures, necessary change. We've got the, the wheel of fortune here. What came to fruition in time, change, fortunate change. We have the eight of swords in the sky. Again, this is... Self-imposed worry, self-imposed restriction. What is holding you back? Your emotions, the moon card. So we get the um, new moon in Taurus, fixed energy, and then we get the full moon in Sagittarius, mutable energy. And this is about going with the flow. This is Piscean energy. Capricorn is a cardinal sign. It's an earth sign. It's like a wall. Breaking through the wall. Breaking through the wall. We get the Prince of Wands. If you've hit a roadblock, Capricornian Capricorns in May, or you are hitting a roadblock, you have the ability to move through this. Through going uh, more, being flexible, using your intuition, and being open to change and choice. Choosing a different path. Show me Capricorn in May. And we get here judge, judgment, the 31st, of pa 31st path. Uh, and this is A Aeon. <laughs> Fortitude, renewal, truths revealed. The judgment in the tarot is about inevitable change through truth being revealed. Okay, Capricorn. The fool is at the base of the pack, starting again. New starts, new phases, new cycles and justice. What is taken away is being given back to you. Sometimes new starts work in odd ways. The very thing you don't want happens and you fear it and then it turns out to be the best thing that has ever happened. All right, Earth Energy, where are we? Capricorn, <laughs> my mind's going blank here. <gasps> ah. Taurus or Virgo? Taurus. And then Virgo. All right, Taurus, let's, ha let's have a look. New moon's in your sign. 
on the 7th of May, 7th, 8th of May, depending on where we are in the world. Taurus. Taurus energy. I feel, these cards feel like I'm handling an old parchment with lots of wisdom on it. The Ace of Wands in the East. <laughs> Herman Handel, Handel Tarot. Rich in detail and symbolism, the Handel Tarot. I'm not being, I'm not promoting this deck, but I'm interested in it. It draws upon many esoteric and religious traditions, particularly Native American, the Holy Grail, the I Ching, the Kabbalah and the Runes. The four suits relate to the different elements and cultures, including, uh, yeah, okay. So that's probably why I feel like I'm holding a lot of information here. Okay. All right. So um, Taurus, what's coming up for Taurus in May? Taurus, 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 Taurus in May. Show me Taurus, please. Show me Taurus in May. Taurus in May. Show me Taurus in May. So, you know, ruled by Venus... A love of, I think, also history, history and architecture, culture. You could find yourself being drawn to culture, finding out about history, finding out about other races of people, finding out about origins, even mysticism in some way. You could be actually drawn to study different religions. Taurus, what's happening with you, Taurus? That's a, a weird thing for me to say to you, but anyway, let's see. Taurus, what's happening to Taurus in the month of May? New moons about initiations. <laughs> the Ace of Earth, the Ace of Pentacles. There is some sort of new start in your thinking. I think it is around your thinking. That's what I'm picking up from these cards. And we get the Queen of Stones again, the Spider Woman. The threads here. The threads, the medicine wheel. Perhaps being able to see how things fit together in your own life and in your own, again, the clarity, finding clarity in May. Love, the Two of Cups, is at the foundation of this of the reading. Again, ruled by Venus, love, Taurus. Working out how relationships work, how they tick, seeing the bigger picture in some way. The Princess of Wands in the past, Perhaps you started moving in that direction, but you stopped. The new moon will give you the forward motion to continue there. The Empress, your energy here, Taurus, the Empress card. A season of time and abundance, an abundance there. An all-seeing eye to the future. Venus energy, love. You are working out how relationships work. The eight of pentacles and becoming more skilled in the world and in as the driver of your own destiny, not, not, not being subjected. To the will of others, being more self-sufficient, being able to handle whatever comes at you. It's all about love for you, Taurus. Knowledge, knowledge, seeking knowledge in May. And then we get the King of Wands bravely and with motivation seeking new knowledge. You may have been oppressed in the past by the Ace of Swords, the truth. However, you get the Ace of Pentacles, your own energy, not anyone else's. People may have told you things in the past and you, they just didn't sink in, but now, now you're creating your own way of navigating the world. There's a breakthrough for you, 
Taurus, a huge breakthrough in your energy in May, and knowledge. I'm not even going to say enlightenment. It is knowledge, concrete knowledge in relation to love and relationships. This is a an uptick, an upgrade in your energy in May around how you perceive and relate to others. All right. What is the tree of life? What is happening for Taurus in May? Adjustment, adjustment. Justice card, the 22nd um, path. And it is about adjustment. So when, for Taurus, you know, whatever has happened in your past, it's knocked you off your knocked you off your path, knocked you off your perch. How quickly we either find a new pathway forward or get back onto the path we were once on, it's how easily we adjust. And Taurians find it hard to adjust in many ways. They uh, laboriously um, take their time <laughs> and study an experience, and then they decide. Karmic adjustment, balance, and objectivity. And what does all that add up to? But peace of mind, peace, peace in your heart. Because this is about Venus, this is about love. This is about relationships. All right, Virgo, last one. I think I've got 12 here. <laughs> 21 11 Virgo what's happening for Virgo oh it's a it's a I don't know it's a hell of a time at the moment for negotiating there's a lot of confusion about um there's a lot of worry and fear too but we're all moving toward greater clarity on all on all levels, at an energetic le energetic level, heart level, mind level. Okay, mind, body, spirit level. Virgo, what's happening for Virgo? Show me what's happening for Virgo. I'm just seeing words written on a tablet here. I'm trying to work out what what spirit wants to tell me. So I'm getting like a elemental energy here. Like a, hmm. so I'm getting the Ace of Swords energy. What did you want to write on this? Partnerships. Partnerships. Okay. All right. Virgo, what do what is what is happening for Virgo? The Emperor control. Are you exerting too much control? Do you feel you don't have enough control in a partnership? Virgo, what's happening <laughs> for Virgo? What's happening for Virgo in May? Virgo in May. So we have here the Hierophant card. This is Taurus energy. The Hierophant spirit. There's the star. Spiritual spiritual insight. You might have gone, I don't need that. I'm a Virgo. But you do need it. The Queen of Swords. Information. Logic. Information coming through. You can't argue with the spiritual insight that you're getting in May. Okay, we get the Five of Swords, Defeat, Feeling Like You're Being Sabotaged. <laughs> if you move beyond the, uh, if you gain the spiritual insight, you raise above anyone's ability to actually sabotage you and you raise above your, uh, any self-sabotage as well. There's something in the bubble here, if I can see what it is. Is it a rose? It's very tiny here. Love, love, love. 
Okay, the Prince of Swords in the past, the truth, and this is the thing with Virgos, they perceive the truth very, very, very easily and quickly. They're ruled by Mercury, don't forget. Let's see what else is here. The Tower. If you don't move out of fixed beliefs, you're a mutable sign, so this should be easy for you to do. But whatever's holding you back, whether it's your focus in on detail or things that don't really matter because the spiritual transcends everything. We get Mars, the tower, breaking down the structures that you perhaps have held on to for quite some time. And really, rather than being on your own, unifying emotionally, overflowing the three of cups, celebrations, and the Seven of Wands takes courage to move out of a fixed belief, Virgo. Courage is Seven of Wands. And then we get the King of Wands moving into fire energy. You're going to do it. This is justice. This is breaking down old ways of thinking for you, Virgo, in May. This is May's a huge month. Again, that Gemini energy moving into Sun into Gemini. Mercury energy allows us to get the clarity we need in the face of confusion. So I see breakthroughs in your pattern or way of thinking, Virgo. Okay, let's uh, pull from the tree of life and finish this reading up. And I'm not all that tired, so I must have, it must be the handle tarot. The parchment of papers in my hand. Okay. Whatever needs to be broken down, it's a long time. It's a long time coming. It has to be done. Be open to new ways of thinking, feeling and reacting and relating Virgo in May. If you don't, it'll happen anyway. Okay, so go with the flow. Okay, Virgo, what's coming up for you in May? Right, the spiritual triangle again. Um, the spiritual triangle, but it's it's ascension. <laughs> oh my goodness! <gasps> Neptune, Uranus, Saturn, putting the work in. Open to new ideas coming in quickly. Something new coming into form. Ascension, divinity, creation, manifestation. The spiritual triangle. The spiritual triangle. Okay. Interesting. All right. Um, there's messages for all of us in the, in that la, in the this tarot scope. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, um, and I'll get on um, and go for my e-bike ride and seek out those cockatoos that I love so much. All right then, bye for now.